I have often selected big cats for a study because they're big and beautiful and they're threatened. And in addition, they have a key role in the environment. And so if I study the tiger, let us say, I'm automatically studying the cheetle deer and the sambar, and I'm automatically studying the vegetation they eat. I like to look at the interrelationship in nature. Uh, that helps managing an area and so forth. But at the same time, by protecting these big cats, you protect the whole habitat with thousands of species of plants and animals we don't even know anything about. So that is one purpose. But of course, big cats are a problem in that they all kill livestock. Uh, occasionally, rare occasion, one kills people. But because they're big predators, people are afraid of them. Uh, media often picture them as ferocious animals in print or in film. Uh, people are afraid of them. And sometimes, if it's a man-eater in the area, they rightly should be. But normally, if you treat them with respect, they try to treat you with respect. Cat conservation is a difficult part. Some big cats, like the mountain lion or puma in North America, are doing all right. The China uh, tiger is almost finished, except for a few in the Northeast. Uh, India is the best hope for the tiger. It still has the most, it has the reserves, and so forth. Jaguar is still widely distributed, but locally, of course, they're not liked. They kill cattle, and now, unfortunately, they're being killed for tiger bones. They're being killed and exported uh, to China to be sold as tiger bones. So, snow leopards, widely distributed in the mountains still. Uh, you have a few hundred in India. But again, there's pressure on them to kill livestock. And so conservationists, NGOs, government, everybody needs to keep an eye on what's going on. They're all protected by law, but that means very little. And so what to do? You can't keep an eye on everything. And Ultimately, they will end up in little fragments of habitat. That's why it's so important to keep reserves as big as possible in India for tigers and leopards so they can live in that in large enough populations to survive. It varies a lot depending on the species where it is. For example, orangutans are now in serious trouble. I surveyed them in Sarawak uh, oh, 1960, a long time ago. But since then there's been a lot of forest destruction. And right now the most serious threat to the orangutan, there are two. One is destruction of forest to plant palm oil plantations so they don't have habitat. Another is to capture babies for the zoo uh, and other private menageries. And then they often shoot the mother to get the baby. Well, uh, a great ape reproduces very slowly. And so, yes, there's serious concern for the orangutan. The mountain gorilla at present because of the tourism and the income it brings to Rwanda and lesser extent Congo, uh, people pay attention to. 
But there's this vast rainforest of the Congo and in West Africa. Uh, there are big reserves in the area, but people, local people, hunt them for meat. And even though the forest is fine, it's not difficult to shoot a chimpanzee. Oh, one species of chimpanzee, the bonobo, is the other. Uh, West African gorillas have the same problem. Uh, timber companies cut big swaths of forest. Local people eat the gorillas. And so the western lowland gorilla is in serious threat because of those two issues. And what to do? People have tried working with the timber companies to agree to leave certain tracts of timber uncut. And that's a first step, and it's been a useful step. But to convince local people not to shoot or trap the gorillas is more difficult. They want meat, and there's, they don't get any meat living in a rainforest except to kill wildlife. And it needs, just government laws are all there, but it needs people on the ground to work with the communities and see what can be done. The panda, in some ways, is fortunate. It is so distinctly marked. It has an interesting face with the black eye patches and his black and white coat. Uh, it's big and cuddly, so people relate to it because it's so unique in so many ways. And that is helping it. Uh, World Wildlife Fund made it a symbol. So immediately worldwide, it became known, better known, let us say. And I was very fortunate. World Wildlife Fund made an agreement with China to study the panda and help conservation. And they asked me, and the Chinese generously said, yes, I could come and work with their teams in that area. And it was very lucky. It's a difficult time for China. It was right after the Cultural Revolution. But uh, they were very cooperative, and we had a very good team there in the mountains. And I traveled widely with them. We studied the panda in detail and found out what it needed to survive. And we made then suggestions to the government. And after five years, I said, good. Uh, here it is. Well, then China asked me to work on snow leopards in the Tibet Plateau, and I moved on to that. But because of the work our team did, China became aware of the problems, and because it is an international symbol and a precious animal of China, they implemented most of the suggestions. They set up more reserves, they offered better protection, so pandas increased again. So at present, there are about 2,000 pandas, which is a very small number scattered in various isolated reserves. So there has to be continual attention to make sure that they survive. No encroachment on their reserves. Uh, Poaching has been mostly incidental. You know, you set a snare for wild pig and a panda bumbles into it, but it's still a loss of a panda. So uh, it's essential people go into the forest on patrols and make sure there are no snares. But all in all, China has done a very good job in the past 20 years on helping the panda. Fortunately, right now, it's not fashionable to wear the shawls made from chiru wool. What happens in the future, I don't know. All I do know is that 
When I saw that so many of you were being killed, I didn't know what they were killed for. I finally, a wool dealer wrote me, and I found out what it was used for. Then I went to the Chinese government and said, hey, look, this is what's happening. And he said, very generously, publicize it. Let the world know that they shouldn't use chiru wool. And so I had very good cooperation in India because all the wool, of course, was smuggled into India and on to Srinagar and Kashmir to make these beautiful shawls. And I had very good from the uh, Wildlife Protection Society in India and others that publicized the problem of the Chiru. So it takes cooperation with two countries. Slowly in some parts of Tibet Plateau, the Chiru are increasing again in number according to my recent surveys. But in the western part, poaching continues and wool still comes to India. But far fewer kilos of wool than before. There have been some very useful advances. One is the camera trap that sets automatic pictures of people walk by. But remember, the camera trap was first used in the 1930s by a man named Champion here in India. He had a primitive one, but still the right kind of thinking. Uh, what other advances are? There are radio collars. Uh, in the mid-60s, when I was working on lions, I used some of the first radio collars, which only were good for a few hundred yards in the open. Now you have satellite collars, you can sit in front of your computer at home with a glass of beer. Those are all tools, remember. They help you get data, but you shouldn't get too enamored with them. People still, if you want to learn about animals, need to be out in the forests and on the grasslands and learn on, about the animals on the ground about things that you can't get uh, on camera. Uh, I can go here in Rajiji and go to a tree where a tiger has scent marked and sniff it to see what it smells like. How do they communicate? Uh, what I mean is don't start depending on this kind of thing like some people are doing these days, but combine it to improve your work. My legacy, if any, will be the young people I have trained, who in turn train others, who in turn train others. So long after being completely forgotten, my vision continues through the generations. That's what I look for. <laughs>